Hello, it is Druella and Shelby. I don't know how to introduce it yet, but you guys are the Drew Crew. This is what you guys have decided on. So I don't know if I should be like, hey guys, it's Druella anymore. Like, am I about to have to change my whole catchphrase? Probably. <laughs> Mine won't change. So that's that's good. Good. She will still be Ann Shelby. Mm -hmm. Anyways, guys, hello, Drew Crew. Welcome to uh, Druella. <laughs> <laughs> and Shelby. <laughs> we don't know how to start an intro anymore, but that's fine. Let's go ahead and roll the, roll the, roll the intro. This is me singing during the intro because we're thinking these background music and I think it's so cute because we like to watch people talk. No, real people. Today we are doing our first ever movie review. We're excited. You guys wanted it. You guys have asked so many times for us to start reviewing movies. So we are gonna try our best to start reviewing movies and trying to put this out once a week. It is gonna be hard for us to do at first, but we're we're gonna find a way to get this down to where we can do this once a week. It keeps us watching movies. It keeps us on YouTube more. We're so excited to be here. So Shelby, we're doing our first movie review. What movie are we reviewing? We are reviewing the movie Hatchet. What's Hatchet? Um, I'm just gonna read the wiki page on this just to make it easier if you haven't seen this movie. Hatchet is a 2006 American slasher film written and directed by Adam Green. The film has an ensemble of a cast including Kane Hodder, I'll just read that, and Robert England, and Tony Todd, if you know who that is as well. <laughs> Uh, in the style of old school slasher films such as Friday the 13th, the plot follows a group of tourists on a New Orleans haunted swamp tour who accidentally get stranded in the wilderness only to be hunted by a vengeful, supernatural deformed man who kills anyone that enters the swamp. The film spawns- <laughs> It's a trick. It has Kane Hodder in it, so you can only imagine that it's like movies that he's filmed before. It uh, released in 2007 in the United States after the Tribeca Film Festival in 2006. So we have watched Hatchet and we have formed opinions on Hatchet and we're here to talk about it because I think that's what reviewing a movie is. Also, I'd like to point out the runtime is 83 minutes. They had a budget of $1.5 million, which is not a lot of money whatsoever. And it only made $208,000 at the box office. We did rate this movie together a five out of 10 stars. Basically, you enter Ben, he's upset. His girlfriend of eight years, I think he said, left him. So he and his boys are on a trip and they're doing Mardi Gras. So right off the bat, it's weird as shit. I am not sure why Marilyn Manson is playing during Mardi Gras. It is, <laughs> it's very like Final Destination intro where it's like a bunch of like 2000s like dad rock music almost overlaid on like- To boobs and yeah, beads, bro. That just, is it, which is fine. Like. It, they got the Mardi Gras feel down, but it was really weird that Marilyn Manson was playing in the Philly. whole. Yeah, the whole soundtrack was just like in the, in the score and the whole movie. I feel like was not very fitting. Ben and his boys are down here having a great time, but Ben decides that he wants to go on this haunted swamp tour. So Ben goes, and his friend Marcus just so happens to follow him. And Marcus does not want to be there. I have from the beginning chose that Ben and Marcus are my favorite characters. They're the only likable ones. They are the only likable characters in this movie, Marcus, because because he is supporting his friend Ben because Ben is heartbroken. And he's just trying to he's go just, see some ghosts. He's so cute, he's so tall, he cares about his ghosts. So Ben goes, finds the supposed haunted tour, and the guy says, listen, bud, we don't do the tour anymore. So then he sends him somewhere else, and Ben goes and... I'd like to point out that Candyman himself plays the mysterious man in the building that says they don't do tours anymore. He does. And that was our first thought. We were so excited to see him. But anyways, he points them in another direction. Then they run into this little guy named Andrew, who is hosting swamp tours. Now, eventually you learn Andrew's just a con man, and he's taking them into a haunted swamp, which is really haunted by the spirit of our homeboy, Victor Crowley. Well, his character is very predictable from the beginning. I don't know if that was on purpose or if his acting is horrible. Or, or if it's a mix of both. Yeah. <laughs> but you can definitely tell with his switching accents, which because his accents switch so much, I want to go with this was on purpose. We meet Andrew, which makes so much sense. He's taking us on this fake tour, right? So that makes sense. But what doesn't make sense is that we then meet Doug Jenna and Misty. Which this, I don't know, I just got this whole uncomfortable thing because he's like filming, like he's supposed to be like a big time, you know, director. These nudity and just like very 
sexually charged scenes and they're not like they're not good. short scenes and they then, went on for a minute they didn't make sense and it was just like forced and i think this was just to keep the runtime of the movie going honestly i think anything that had these three in it was for runtime because i don't feel like we also got an explanation as to why they are on this tour well they came to to meet this big director here at mardi gras or like no well, they, they, they were at mardi gras but why are they on the ghost tour that's a good question. Yeah, that part we didn't really get. So we don't Unless we missed it. Yeah, if we missed it, please comment it below because we're confused as fuck as to why these people are on the ghost. So we meet all these characters. We're gonna go ahead and go on the tour. So we hop on a bus. On the bus, they meet an elderly couple named Jim and Shannon. They also meet a very quiet girl named Mary Beth that's in the back of the bus. So Mary Beth is mysterious. We wanna know who she is immediately. Ben has to sit next to her and Ben's still awk. So of course he tries to talk to her. Doesn't go well, doesn't matter. It's not really like, I feel like there is so much in this movie that is just for runtime. But anyways, let's fast forward. We're on our swamp tour. So based off of this, them trying to force this runtime, I think they're really trying to push the very much like unique group of characters. Like the quiet girl and the nerdy guy obviously are always kind of a character, but then they like bring in the elderly couple and then like the weird like adult actress in the creep. I don't know. It's just, they try to be a unique group of people and I don't get it. None but... of the characters had any sort of personality to where you would like them, like I said, besides Ben and Market. Mm -hmm. Even Mary Beth ends up kind of weird in the end. But whatever. Okay, so anyways, we end up on our tour. We learn everybody's reason for kind of being on the tour. I guess the older couple is just kind of there. They do this thing. I, okay, we don't learn why everybody's on the tour. These no. old people, yeah. they're just there. They just like it. The adult film stars, we don't even it's, know why they're there. It's just a tourist thing yes. I guess so it's like why would all these people end up here exactly <laughs> and Marcus is here because he's being a good friend of Ben and then you learn Mary Beth is here because she's looking for her brother and father that went missing that were in the same swamp which is how the movie began yes so that's how the movie starts this group of people ends up on this tour and unfortunately the first person to go ends up being the elderly man Mr. Jim and uh, these deaths every single one in the movie guys it's brutal it is they waste Filled with blood. They waste no time with when once they get right into a kill, he doesn't he, wait to kill him. Yeah. He does there's no like obviously he can't talk. I'm but gonna there's fuck with you. Yeah, there's he no just, he just does dead, it. Bro. And he really likes the neck and the head area, we have noticed. I don't feel like any of the kills were necessarily overkill or bad. Yeah. I liked them all. Like I feel like he did an amazing job of killing all these people. Which but we hear several, yeah, and we hear several different stories to Mr. Victor Crowley as to why he is who he is. But you do eventually learn in the movie. The boat gets stuck. It sinks. Everybody figures out that homeboy is a con artist. He's from Detroit. They're pissed. <laughs> Reasonably. I'd be pissed that he was from Detroit. I'm mad as hell. There's mosquitoes out here. Why the fuck are we stuck out here? But anyways, so <laughs> me and the mosquitoes. <laughs> Homeboy's still trying to get nudie shots of the two little cutie ladies. But another he does this thing, on the boat as well. He does this everywhere, guys. Yeah. Another thing that gets us is the relationship between Misty and Jenna is just weird. They're arguing the entire time, throwing slugs, insulting each other. It's like they're trying to be catty teenagers, but they're very much full-grown adults, and it just doesn't work out for their character. It's weird. D Both of the girls are cute. I get why we want to see them naked, but I just, they're characters. Characters are not likable, period. I am waiting for Misty to die the entire movie. And I don't know if they're going for the 80s slasher theme of let's show women in all of our shots, you know, just like naked girl, dead. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's fine. That's what we live for. Let's go for it. But the movie just doesn't make sense. It doesn't execute it well. So like we said, Jim dies. And unfortunately, his wife kind of sticks around to watch it happen and ends up dead very quickly after. They both have pretty brutal deaths. I think it was pretty good. So now we know Victor Crowley's real. He is out here. Why is he so mad? So then I think we kind of get the more so real story of Victor Crowley from Mary Beth. And we learned that he he was a disformed child that lived in the woods with his father. His father kind of kept him hidden. But that's because everyone would be mean to him. Mm -hmm. So he kept him kind of hidden. One day, these teens, they're picking on him. They're being mean. They light the house on fire. He's trying to get out. His dad's trying to hatch it in the door and hits him in the face. 
dies and he dies and now his vengeful spirit lives on forever and this just this story makes no fucking sense to me it's very much jason Voorhees lives to you, know, you like can't kill him to make yeah. another jason Voorhees, but we can't you can't kill him at least jason we know why he's pissed at the counselors yeah because is victor just pissed he drowned at everybody yeah. like i don't like his story was just stupid forced Forced and stupid, and I don't like it. He kills people. Every scene he's in is great. His deaths are amazing. It's bloody. It's gory. It's unique. It's good. But the story itself drags on for fucking ever. And it's stupid. It makes no sense. I literally just want to know if Ben lives at this point. What, when does their phone ring though? I don't know. There's like very much weird sidebars the whole time in the movie. Everybody's arguing over everything. They're, but there's also like, they try to split off into these weird stories. They do tell you kind of everybody's story. Everyone kind of gets like an introduction in a sense, but not enough for you to care or make any character connection. Yeah, everybody gets a weird backstory that makes no sense. They don't tie into each other. And some of them even barely get a backstory. Like the two ladies are just trying to get famous and the other dude's just a fucking fraud i guess in movies like this you don't need very much character connection but also like you kind of want to root for some of these people to hope that they stay alive also considering that there is sequels to this movie yeah so which we have not watched yet guys we're gonna go ahead and just put out there that the first one was so bad and the ending pissed me off so much which we'll get to that i don't want to watch hatchet 2 but i'm going to for you Mm -hmm. Love you, Drew. Please like and subscribe. Some of the scenes just go on for way too long. There's too much filler dialogue. They try too hard to push these connections with the characters when they're not there. Please forgive us as this is our first movie review. We're really trying to get this down, guys. But basically, this movie had as much direction as this YouTube video. Yeah. We, I don't know what to tell you. So unfortunately, Filmer Dude dies. And then I think my favorite death actually is Jenna. Whatever he puts on her face. What this it's it? a sander. Oh, okay. He puts a sander on her face. He just like fucks her shit up and then slides her down a pole and we all watch. Her death was my favorite. It was pretty cool. The Actually, they were so all cool. pretty cool. The Everybody, deaths are good. Oh, little old lady's face was just yeah, bro. She looked like an alien from Alien vs. Predator when he did that to her. It was crazy. But, I mean, the deaths were kick-ass. Don't get us wrong. Victor is cool. Like, what could he really do with this lame-ass movie he was written into? I don't even know where to go with this. And how did Kane Hodder agree to do this? Why? I what? guess maybe because it does kind of have the same story as, like, Jason There's Voorhees. lots of nice little shots of blood being thrown up against trees. It almost might even be the same shot. Over and over again? Yeah. <laughs> But there's a lot of blood. Oh my god, there's so much blood in this movie. Yes. With the budget that they had, they spent it all on blood. Everything. Everything on blood. That's what they bought. Corn syrup. That dude, there's like, when he like kept like cutting into the old guy and it's just like psh, 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 Oh yeah, his shoulder is like. So we do end up finding Mary Beth's family. She cries. One thing I would like to note about this movie that is different from most horror movies I've ever seen is there is a connection with death. Unfortunately, my fave little Marcus, he does die. However, after he dies and they run away, Ben vomits and freaks There's out that his real, friend has just died. Real reaction to death. Yes, Mary Beth freaks out that she sees her father and brother's body. And again, she freaks out about the loss of them at the end, which is something you never see in horror movies. They're almost like, my wife of 12 years died. On to the next one. Yeah, move on, whatever, who cares? Don't have to pay for a divorce now. Insurance money. Okay, let's cut that out. If he's this like ghostly spirit thing that can't be killed, why does he eat? Oh yeah, because he's They like mentioned that he eats the animals, unless we're missing something here. Please tell us if we're missing something because- Why does he need to eat? His presence doesn't make sense. If he like lives forever. Why is he haunting anything? What are you so mad about? Because well, he was made fun of. And he thinks everyone's out to get him. Me just... too, bitch. I'm not going to haunt the earth forever. And I was thinking about this. Maybe decapitation and anything from the head above is his kill of choice. Because, because people always attacked him Because he it. was built as hell, honey. Be Sticks built. and stones may break his bones. But they don't really because he lives forever. But and words always hurt him. So he's going to rip your face in half. That's how the saying goes. It's real. Look it up. I just don't know. So we're just going to go ahead and eat. Because we don't know. 
Fast forward to the end of this tragic loss of an hour and a half of my life. And maybe we're being too hard on it. And maybe because I don't feel like we are because we we have mentioned you guys, the two people who have reacted to real people dying in their life. It was great. Like the deaths, they're good. They're bloody. Nothing's bad besides the fact that the entire movie is a bullshit script that's used for fillers. Just so they can show Victor Crowley. Which yeah. if they would have went a different direction with that character, because it's a good character. It he's a been good. He's like, he's this giant deformed monster thing that once was human and now he's not. I feel like maybe they should have mixed up his story more. Made him kind of like you would in Texas Chainsaw. He's still alive. He's still real. And he kills people because all he's been taught is violence. You know, like maybe make Because his, people have given it to him. Yeah, maybe make his father die and that's when he loses his shit. Or maybe Because his... that was the only person that was ever good to him. Right, right. Somebody kills his dad. And then go from there. He's just evil and loses it. And people who come into the swamp, you know, doing their gator fishing or whatever the fuck they were doing, then he just starts to attack them. You know, you're wrong place, wrong time. The legend of Victor Crowley. I feel like that's how they should have gone. Verse is we have this group of random people that have nothing to do with anything. We're all going to talk for an hour and you're going to watch 30 minutes of death. Yes. And I know people do like Victor Crowley as a, as a monster, you know, as a slasher, if you could even Again, call him We don't that. feel like he was bad. No, 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 no. It's, it's the movie itself the movie. being so forced into the storyline and all these characters not making sense, which I know a lot of the time you take into consideration other slasher movies where a lot of them are just fillers to be kills, you know? Which is fine. But if you think about a lot of these, you get a connection with all the characters between or like- Or even the people who are just there to be kills, they don't try to make a connection. It's right. just somebody random, they, they get, die, whatever. They're they, at the party, who cares? But they get what? like a line or two. Yeah. And it's just to make it funny, honestly, yeah. sometimes like- And why do I need to know what honestly happened? Yeah. Or their life story. I don't give a fuck if they're just gonna... I don't know, guys. Anyways, okay. Skr, we'll go to the end. Because Maybe the second and the third one give us more. We'll try, guys. We'll try. But let us tell you the ending. What the fuck? I've okay. seen cliffhangers. They did good. First, I will start with they did good. How this movie ends? Maribel and Ben make it to the boat and she is once again upset about the death of her father and brother. So that's good. Again, we're showing real connection. And while we're having this connection, all of a sudden, Victor jumps out of the fucking, we kind of have like a little Jason thing. He jumps out of the underwater because they're on the boat. He jumps out of the swamp and starts attacking. She goes under. Ben's still on the boat. She does eventually get out of it. So I would say this was a good little jump scare. It was good. Well, and she then, gets caught in like moss or seaweed at the bottom and it catches her feet. So she's trying to get out of that while whatever's happening above her. And then you see a hand reach down into the water. Ben's dead. Bro. Which is, we were getting there, but it's Ben's hand and she tries to reach for it. And then uh, she comes up, but it's Victor Crowley giving her a hand, which is Ben's hand off the, his body. Is ben is dead. Dying. I was so upset. He had made it through the whole motherfucking movie. Ben, please be in part two. Ben. 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 I'm so upset that Ben died because Marcus already got his shit ripped off. But the cutoff at the end of the movie is just like, there's no, you know, movies like fade out or like, there's some sort of like conclusion, which this is an awesome cliffhanger. There's anything. There's literally, literally anything you see at the end it, of the movie. You see Victor Crowley and then it's just, he comes for her and then done by. See you next it time. Is, cuts Here's off. hatchet two in the bottom corner. Click it to watch it. But it, it cuts off so quick. I have never seen a cliffhanger just like. Ah, it's like they ran out of like time on the camera and it they just were like, like cut, cut. That's all we got. That's that was it. our budget. That was a movie. We went to our last cent. Anyways, <coughs> that's what we thought. Five out of 10. And the five points you're getting for each kill. Also Marcus's kill. Marcus, his arms got ripped off. His arms got ripped off and he got slammed against a wall. Bro, I liked him so much. Whatever. Maybe what did because you think of people liked him so much. That's why they killed him so, that much. You know, you know, that hard. You know, you went ham on him, dude. What did you think of Hatchet? Please be sure to comment down below. Also, like I said, this is our first ever movie review. Please feel free to leave us a review on how we did on this review and tell us how we can be better because we do, like I said, want to start doing this once a week. Be kind. No, you don't even have to be kind. Okay. Be whatever you want to be. Please 
comment below and tell us how good or bad this was. Also, this movie sucked, but you can tell us your opinion below. We would love to hear it. We'd also like to hear what you want us to try to review if you call this a review next. We are no, by no means professional. Um, at all, but we will get better and we appreciate you guys all so much. We have big stuff coming and we're so excited that you guys are here for all of it. We fucking love every single one of you little Drew Kuluby. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. See you later.